All right, so welcome to another uh, tutorial for uh, an accounting uh, exercise. This one is uh, called Determining Company Performance uh, and Retained Earnings Using the Accounting Equation. So, um, you know, really w what we're doing here, if we, we look down at this box here, um, there's a scenario using your knowledge of accounting relations or use your knowledge of accounting relations to complete the following table for L brands. Okay. And uh, they say that all amounts are in millions, and guess what? We don't care. Okay, because we are worried about this little box right here. All right. So one of the kind of complicating factors of this particular uh, exercise is the fact that we are dealing with some figures uh, that are in negatives that are not normally uh, negative. Uh, and they tell us that retained earnings, beginning retained earnings, is at a deficit. And this is this can certainly happen. Um, you know, if we have uh, paid out to um, paid out from retained earnings, well, there's actually a couple of there's a couple of different ways that, that this could happen. And I, so I'm, I'm going to decide not to get into that right now. I don't want to uh, confuse you even further. Okay. So, but we do need to understand that our um, our retained earnings are in negative figures, our beginning and an ending. So the way that we would want to go about this um, exercise is to figure out some kind of a formula and to apply to this. And of course, we're going to be missing certain components of the formula. We're going to be missing uh, net income for this first column here, January the 18th, and then we're going to be missing dividends paid here. And what kind of complicates matters is because we're using some negatives, as I go through this on the calculator, I'm going to be producing some negative figures whenever the answer is positive and some positive figures when the answer uh, requires a negative. So let's just look at what the uh, formula we would want to use is, and I'm going to focus on ending retained earnings. So it, we, we could do this a couple of ways, but I'm going to do it this way. Ending retained earnings equals, okay? We're going to start with beginning retained earnings. And I'm doing it this way because we have beginning retained earnings and because that's really the most logical place uh, to start. All right. So beginning retained earnings plus net income. Now, if, if we have net loss, if we have net loss, this uh, becomes a negative sign. But assuming that we do, in fact, have net income, we would have a plus sign here. Okay minus dividends, and dividends are always going to be a minus, okay? Then we're going to say plus or minus um, other, let's see, what do they call it? Other changes in retained earnings, okay? And so these other changes in retained earnings is kind of what I did not want to get up, uh, get into uh, up here, okay? And because this is this involves like uh, stuff that we are not in any way, shape, or form uh, ready for, uh, dealing with you know buying and selling of a company's own stock, and and it's it's way beyond where we're at right now uh, as to how that can happen, uh, okay? So other plus or minus other changes in uh, retained earnings, and uh, and that's it. Okay. So if we if we think about this, we're going to start off. We're going to go with the formula for as long as we can. And so for the first column, we do have beginning retained earnings. So I'm going to type in minus two five eight, and I'm going to hit the equal sign so that I can get that uh, negative sign there. Then if we look at our um, formula here, the next component is negative, I'm sorry, is uh, net income. We, that's what we're solving for. So we're not going to have that uh, for this. Okay, so we're at negative 258 
to begin with, and then we're going to subtract from that 1268. All right, I'm going to hit the equal sign again. And then we have other net changes in retained earnings that are also negative 359 minus 359 equals. So now we're at negative 1885. Okay, so now we, this is where our thought process um, has to change. Now what we can do here is we can merely say, okay, I'm going to add to this negative 1885 727 as a positive. Okay, and if we do that, we have a le uh, negative 1158 on our calculator, but it's really a positive 1158. So I want to so, so that's when we deal with a uh, negative number and we're using a calculator, sometimes we have to, just in the interest of time, uh, kind of keep track of this in our mind. The other thing we could have done is, is, is I'll start over here, negative 258 minus 1268 uh, minus 359 equals negative 1885. And then I'm just going to change that to a positive, and then I'm going to subtract out that 727, and it gives us the positive 1158. Uh, but the net income is 1158, and if we think about it, that makes sense, because before we solved, uh, before we uh, plotted this net income here, right, we were at like a negative 1885. And yet we only ended up at a negative 727 for ending retained earnings. So we can then, we can then, we can test this out. And I'm just going to start over uh, to prove this math. Negative 258, okay, plus 1158 minus 1268 minus 359. And there we have our ending retained earnings of 727. This proves that net income was in fact uh, 1158. Again, sometimes when I'm doing this myself personally, uh, I would have ended up with a negative 1885. I would have then added 727, which would, so let's just do that, show you where we were at again, 1885, that was negative uh, minus 1268, and then, then minus 359 is negative 1885, then plus 727, and then I converted this number to a positive. That's how I would do it. Uh, it's just faster for me to do it that way. Uh, but you do whatever works. And then always go back and check to make sure your numbers make sense, which is what we did. And sure enough, we ended up with ending retained earnings of negative 727. Okay, so for this column then, um, it's important to realize that this, this, uh, ending retained earnings here, this negative 727, is going to be our beginning 727 uh, up here. Now why they skip to uh, past the last few days of January and, and b beginning in the first few days of February, I'm not sure, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so we got uh, minus 727, and I'm going to hit the equal sign. Now this time they provided us with net income, so we can actually add that plus 983, and that puts us at 256. However, then we need to subtract these other net changes, and that's going to give us negative um, uh, 65, all right? Now, um, this one is a little bit easier, uh, but, we're, but we're still having we still have to make a, a little bit of a conversion here. What I would do, and this is maybe because I know how to do this a little bit easier, is I would then add 751 and I come up with 686. But remember in our formula, dividends is a negative. So I'm going to convert that to a negative figure. And since they used uh, brackets or parentheses, I'm going to do the same thing. So now we can check our work and we can say negative 727 and I'm going to hit enter so I get the negative sign plus 983 minus uh, 686 minus 
321 equals negative 751. This proves that we have done the exercise correct.